everyone. Today's world, many people are struggling with fertility problems, which, as some of you know, can have a significant impact on their quality of life. These challenges can stem from a variety of factors, such as lifestyle, environmental toxins, underlying health conditions, and age-related changes. In response to this growing trend, a new generation of experts are focusing on a holistic approach to improving fertility. They recognize that fertility is not just about reproductive organs, but also involves the whole person, including their physical, emotional, and mental well-being. Today, we are honored to introduce two of these experts who will share their knowledge and insights on how to improve fertility holistically. Jackie and Bethany, please introduce yourself. There we go. Fertility for women and men. So I didn't want to leave the men out, obviously, because vital part of it and very uh, overlooked yeah. because this, the, uh, what's the word? The focus is always on women, which I think is um, a shame. Yeah. Okay, one of the greatest obstacles to successful implantation of embryos and reasons why implantation fails in many cases is an inflammatory environment. Okay, I am Jackie. I have been um, in the health and fitness industry for over 30 years. I have a degree in sports science and business. I also have my acupuncture degree. I've been 21 years as an acupuncturist and a female health specialist. I'm a founder member of the Zeta West Affiliated Acupuncturists, mother of two, in spite of uh, advice to the country where I was told that I, that wouldn't happen because of endometriosis, a car accident, and a few other things. And my purpose is to enable people to reclaim their health, wellness, and fitness. <laughs> I'm Beth. I also have an acupuncture degree, um, and I've done an advanced level diploma in fertility acupuncture. I'm a member of the Advanced Fertility Support Network, as well as a member of the Acupuncture Fertility Network. I'm currently pregnant, <clears throat> and my purpose is to teach women how to understand their bodies and their cycles. Grandma here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you that one? Yes. So how we approach working with a patient. Um, so obviously acupuncture is amazingly helpful when it comes to fertility. There's lots of ways that we can modulate and help women's kind of cycles, ovulation and things like that. Um, alongside this, we recommend nutrition and supplements, exercise and, and movement. Um, we teach our patients about the effects of stress and the importance of rest, sleep and relaxation. And just how important it is to think about the mind body and spirit as a whole when you're thinking about fertility. I'm not sure why I decided to put myself doing a handstand there. I don't know why, but <laughs> that's me doing a handstand. Anyway, our real five a day is oxygen, water, essential fatty acids, which is a huge part of what we're going to discuss today. And when I say essential fatty acids, people seem to think if you advise taking omega-3 or you advise any of the 11 essential fatty acids, People are like, mm, it's just a supplement. No, no, essential. It's in. The, it's literally in the title. They are essential fatty acids and shouldn't be overlooked. Nutrients, vitamins, minerals for life um, from nutritious food. I do believe we need to get some from food. It's just our food industry is not great. And of course, clever supplementation with natural and food derived supplements. And then obviously movement, because we want nutrition in, waste out, so we want healthy bowels as well. Okay, when we're working with women um, who are struggling with fertility, we have many, many emotions you're dealing with. So anybody who's going to start discussing fertility or any of the period menstrual issues, please handle these ladies with care. You may have someone who's right at the beginning of this journey, or you may have someone who's six cycles in and guilt that they feel um, about not being able to get pregnant, the regret, the anger, disappointment. These are all emotions that they're generally feeling, especially if they're currently going through anything. Shame that they can't get pregnant, failure that the job they're supposed to do isn't happening and their body's failing them. Envy of other people. Some people are not envious at all. Some people are very loving but actually when you get the behind closed doors they want to let out that it's not fair emotion yeah. and that's okay but when you're going to have a conversation with fertility patients just remember there's a bigger picture if you start 
throw in supplementation and uh, advice at them, just remember to hold them, look after them because they do need that. Yeah, you have to just, you have to take it very gently with them and suggest things one bit at a time. Um, because normally they've had so many people giving them so much advice, they feel a bit overwhelmed. So yeah, you have to be very gentle with how that happens. And I was speaking to Zeta West recently and she said she's, if she wants to introduce a vitamin or a new mineral or something into her package, she has to be very careful because the women are so highly strung with stress that they don't like even a tiny change. Mm. So just, you know, look after them and explain. The thing at the bottom, epigenetics, we do inherit things from our parents and from our grandparents and basically, you know, the family line. That doesn't mean that you're actually going to be stuck with that. Um, what happens is you get a set of epigenetics, but your diet, lifestyle, etc., will have an impact on that. So you won't necessarily, you'll have a match, but it won't necessarily be lit unless you have a bad lifestyle that leads to that. You don't have to look at your parent and think, oh, because of they've got this, I've got this. Yeah, because mum has F um, endometriosis and managed to have two children. I've got endometriosis and I'm currently pregnant, so it doesn't mean that it's the end of the line as well. So this is kind of the Western world fertility pathway. It can kind of ebb and flow between all of this stuff, but generally before the first GP appointment, this is a golden time of targeted advice. We generally want to say to patients, give us a year, um, three months to a year, but ideally a year to kind of prep the body, get all the nutrients right, get the supplementation right, get the menstrual cycle in the right place to really have the body in a healthy place to then start to try to get pregnant. There's very little education about getting pregnant, um, and th but there's masses about not to get pregnant, including all the contraception that they just put young girls on, which creates loads of problems in itself. Um, but the journey starts when a problem has been identified um, and there's very little easy accessible advice on health, nutrition, lifestyle, stress, etc. So when you go to the GP, they generally say to you, have you been trying for a year? And if you haven't, they'll normally send you away and wait till you've been trying a year. Um, we say to gently suggest that you have been doing it for a year, improvise and say that you've been trying for a year. And then from this, they should give you hormonal blood tests, an internal scan, and they should also do a semen sample. And then if that comes back that there's bigger problems or you're still struggling to conceive or my favorite, they label you as unexplained infertility you then get passed on to a fertility clinic, sometimes through the NHS, sometimes private. Um, and then this is where you get more tests and invasive scans. Very little, if any, lifestyle advice is given and they'll put you on Clomid, which helps with ovulation, or they'll do IUI, IVF, or ICSI. So IUI is basically where the sperm's put into the uterus. IVF, as we know, the egg and the sperm are put together in a dish and the the best sperm still wins at that point. ICSI is where a sperm is put into the egg. So they pick the sperm. That's the difference with those. And ICSI is often used if they think there's a male factor involved as well. Um, and then they can give you some counselling, which helps with your mo emotional and mental health led. Um, however, there's no kind of nutritional lifestyle counselling. Again, it's very much when you're in this, you get thrown in the deep end and you don't get supported around the outside of what's going on. It's very much just focused on the mechanics, I'd say. Very much the mechanics. Um, and then if this still isn't successful, they can sometimes suggest egg or sperm donation, depending on where the problem is and what's going on. And then again, if this isn't successful, people can then think about like surrogacy, fostering, adoption and options like that. But support is required at all stages um, and being of optimal health is really vital for everywhere in this journey. Um, you'd rather be prepped with that at the start, but no matter where you get someone, you can always improve their health. IVF was originally for plumbing issues is how I see it. You know, someone didn't have any tubes or they were blocked or there was that sort of issue. Whereas it's now kind of being used for everything before lots of stages that could be put in place and i think we need to kind of somehow get that out there that 
There are lots of things you can do before it becomes over medicalized. We do still need this and we don't un, you know, underrate any of this or you know, undermine it. However, there is lots of stages that can be helped if you can find the right advice, but it is overwhelming out there, especially on the internet. Yeah. GPs and fertility clinics. Nutrition, nutrition in general is excluded. And I have uh, spoken to a few people because um, when I was doing this, I thought I better just check that, but it's still pretty much excluded. Um, it's medication based blood tests, which are very useful, especially for us. We still want to see the blood tests. We mm -hmm. want to see what's happening with your AMH, with your FSH, LH progesterone, LH progesterone estrogen, et cetera, et cetera, <laughs> et cetera. Um, then you can have more invasive tests. Then there's the NHS versus private. Now the NHS has some fantastic equipment, but they often don't have the time. Yeah. And sometimes with the private, sometimes actually the equipment's not always as great as the NHS. So NHS versus private is very, very difficult to ju judge which clinic. I would suggest you find a cons consultant that you gel with and you resonate with um, going forwards. Um, acupuncture is widely respected and accepted in the uh, field of uh, fertility and there's lots of research behind it. In fact, there's a particular um, treatment before and post pre and post transfer, which they have proved uh, increases your, what's the chances by 25%. There you go. So there, there are studies out there on that, which I can get to people if they want them. Um, holistic care is vital. And couples, mainly women at each stage, have anything from zero knowledge to scientist researcher level knowledge. So again, when you speak to someone, be very careful how you step into this, because you you might find someone that's five or six cycles in, and I can tell you they know everything and they know what they're doing, and they're not being a, I know everything. They literally have research to them. But what they what sometimes happens with those is you see how much their heart is hurting, you see how much their emotions hurting. They've become very, very uh, information focused and you need to hold them there as well mm -hmm. whilst they're struggling, they're finding the rest of the information. Yeah. Yes, um, so why is this letting people down? Um, why, do, why do we hope for the best and not think about the quality of the egg, the sperm and the best environment to grow the miracle? Um, increasingly, all roads to fertility point towards reducing inflammation in the body. Diet, nutrition and supplements can help. And persistent ongoing inflammation in the body leads to conditions that adversely affect fertility. There is so much information out there on the internet and social media that can be confusing and overwhelming. And we get this time and time again, which is why we try to direct people to either our pages or people that we trust because there's so much information and everyone argues with each other about what's true. Um, but in the picture that you can see on the slide, you can literally see how the inflammation is in the lining of the uterus. And so it's really hard to expect an egg to want to implant if the environment's not very homely. Well, you need it homely. You need it homely. You need it homely. You need some of that thing. So we can help. I'm going to briefly talk just about these products and we're going to go on to some other information. But basically, the Zenzino products can help support women at all stages of fertility in men and women. Wouldn't it be great to have this as one of the first steps and never have to ever visit the GP? Imagine, or you go to the GP and they say, right, let's put you on the full health protocol. I have always, for at least 20 years plus, advised multivitamin and mineral supplements, essential fatty acids and gut health supplements. I have landed with Zanzino because they are by far the best product I have come across, um, but there are others out there. You also need a rainbow plate, protein rich diet, test based nutrition and supplementation. You also, it's good to have like connections or referrals. So if you're working solely from the nutrition thing, you know, have acupuncturists, reflexologists, Reiki, whoever, whoever the, the ladies or men will reach to for support. That's, you, you want to have like a bit of a network. Mm. I think I'm also a great case study for all of this because I've taken all of the Zenzino supplements and have been since before I was pregnant. So I'm a very good case study to show how amazing they are. My baby with a Zenzino baby. <laughs> So female fertility issues. So we've got polycystic ovarian syndrome or polycystic ovaries. So these are actually two different things that mean 
lots of different things. Um, and then we've got endometriosis, adenomyosis, pelvic inflammatory disease, fibroids, polyps, cysts, locked tubes, excess weight, autoimmune conditions, which include allergies, miscarriage, stress, and my favorite, unexplained infertility, which I can say that most of my patients get labeled with because the doctors kind of only do a small amount of investigation and then label them with this and send them on for IVF, which is extremely frustrating because lots of patients feel like they've got nowhere to go with it because there's nothing that they can hone in on and work on because it's just unexplained. A quick note on that, we are going to do, we are going to go into them, well not today, but we are going to do a talk on different bits. So if anybody at any point wants a particular one, but we're definitely going to do endometriosis and adenomosis and polycystic, polycystic ovaries. ovaries and polycystic ovary syndrome, but we'll add them in. But if you look at that list, the majority of those are caused by inflammation. Yes. Which is your omega-6-3 balance right there and your omega-3 index. We have decreased our consumption of essential fatty acids by up to 80% and increased our consumption of damaged fats by over 1,200% in one generation, which is terrifying. So fats, omega-3 and 6, uh, healthy fats are essential for hormone balance, production and the maintenance of correct hormone function. Omega-3 fatty acids counteract the inflammatory effects of omega-6 and omega-6 drives inflammation and needs to be balanced with omega-3. Omega-3 fatty acids are anti-inflammatory and modulate hormone sensitivity and this is critical for follicular release and egg quality. Linoleic acid and al alpha linoleic acid are essential to every living cell in the body. In ovulation, they are key for the follicular rupture, collapse and release of the egg, allowing the development of the corpus luteum responsible for progesterone. Omega-6 is not in essence bad as we do need it, but it does need to be balanced with omega-3. So, you've got, you know, your omega-6 is your accelerator, your omega-3 is your brake. You need them both to have a healthy environment. Um, so omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA, they're vital for cell, mem mem <laughs> <laughs> cell membrane health, lowering inflammation and promoting good prostaglandins. Omega-3 fatty acids also improve insulin sensitivity, helping to balance blood sugar levels. Omega-3 fatty acids play a role in egg quality, ovulation and implantation. It is believed that omega-3 plays an important role in the fertility by delaying ovarian aging and improving egg quality. Okay, this is one that I've looked into recently because people have been worried um, because IVF clinics, unfortunately, can basically say, we suggest you, to stop, we suggest you stop taking omega-3 supplementation if you're on warfarin or any other blood thinner. This can be part of their medical pro uh, protocol. So although it can be a bit irritating to hear it, they have their protocols and we have to work with the medical profession to retain our credibility and to support alongside. But what I will say is we can challenge them. So give the information sheet to your client and get them to speak to their consultant directly. And, and this is important. Omega-3 does not cause blood thinning in literal terms. Omega-3 has a natural anticoagulant properties. This means fish algae oil can prevent blood clotting. Omega-3 alone poses no risk of bleeding. There is concern about their use alongside specific medications and anticoagulants. Omega-3 and blood thinners hinder blood clot formation. A, re a review of 52 studies showed that fish oil helped reduce blood clotting but did not increase the risk of bleeding in healthy people. There is no real evidence of increased bleeding time if taken under 5,000 milligram a day. Basically, would you eat oily fish and have um, olive oil every day? The balance oil is simply food. If you get a good one, it's simply food. Balance oil, the Zenzino one, that is what it is. The full health protocol and vitamin D Xenoshine should be mandatory, I believe, as we believe it optimizes the success of pregnancy and IVF treatment. Having said all this, we must have mutual respect so that we are, you know, so they look at us with respect too. So don't bulldoze, don't override, just say, look, these are the facts, please take them. And hopefully, I've never had a problem yet with any clinic saying, no. You can't take it. Me neither. So you can challenge it, but do it in the right way.
it. This is from one of my favorite books. Um, it starts with an egg, which is a great fertility book that I recommend everyone to read. Um, so researchers in Iran measured the levels of individual fatty acids and in the follicle fluid of women undergoing IVF. The researchers found a few general trends that further supported the concept of the Mediterranean diet improving fertility. So specifically, they found that women who became pregnant after IVF had, had a higher overall level of omega-3 fatty acids in their ovaries and a higher proportion of omega-3 to omega-6. As we would expect, not all omega-6 fatty acids were bad news for fertility in the Iranian study, but the bad omega-6 fatty acid arachidonic. arachidonic acid was linked to decreased fertility, specifically in women with higher mm. arachidonic acid levels. Their eggs were less likely to fertilize. And also women who became pregnant had slightly lower arachidonic acid levels than women who did not. Ideally, when, you do, when we do the balance test and when you're testing for these levels, Ideally, you, you know, you want your arachidonic acid in the green part. You want to make sure it's in the good bit. This is one of those ones where you're like, omega sixes aren't bad, but let's keep that one in the right place. So hormones, one of my favorite things to talk about. Uh, progesterone helps to regulate your cycle, but its main job is to get your uterus ready for pregnancy. After you ovulate each month, progesterone helps to thicken the lining of your womb to prepare for the fertilized egg. If there is no fertilized egg, then the lining starts to come away, which is then menstruation. Estrogen is one of the main hormones driving the menstrual cycle and low estrogen levels can prevent ovulation and make falling pregnant difficult. Stress increases cortisol, which decreases active progesterone. Cortisol increases the production of estrogen, so prolonged stress can lead to estrogen dominance. The liver can then be overwhelmed and unable to deal with the excess estrogen. With a good E essential fatty acid profile and a good nutrition profile, we can effectively create tissue hormones called prostaglandins. These are anti-inflammatory and essential in the regulation of the reproductive system and blood flow. Can you see how important this is? <laughs> it's so important. <laughs> and then body weight. So maintaining a healthy body weight with regular movement, exercise, and regular bowel movements are all essential for fertility, as being overweight can mean a higher hormone exposure and higher levels of inflammation. So women that hold weight around their middle are shown to be more insulin resistant, and insulin resistance can inhibit ovulation and also disrupt hormone levels. Our fat cells are not just globules of li liquids, lipids. They are mini hormone factories. They make estrogen and testosterone. Good gut health supports progesterone and estrogen levels. Disruption of gut microbes can bring hormone havoc. The uh, relationship between the gut and your hormones is essential. You need a healthy gut. Being constipated is another issue that leads to overexposure to estrogen. The body discards excess hormones through our stools. When we get constipated, the waste products seep back into our bodies through the intestinal wall and then get reabsorbed. This is why we need good gut health, because you'll just find otherwise your estrogen's rising again. Yeah, and so it's really important to ask people about their bowel movements, yes. which they don't like talking about. No. Um, and to get... I like talking about bowel movements. Well, yeah, but to get good details about them, kind of how often they're going, what's it like, and all of that stuff, rather than just, are you regular? Because to them, they think they're regular, so they'll just say yes. So you have to press a bit further than that. Because ideally, people need to go to toilet every day every day really <laughs> um so cell membrane fluidity gametes are an organism's reproductive cells the female gametes are egg cells and the male gametes are sperm so eggs and sperm are cells and what's important about cells we want good cell membrane fluidity and we want our cells to be optimum so cell membrane composition and its structural architecture are critical for the health of cells we need sound cellular structure and fluidity to allow nutrients in and waste products out. We need essential fatty acids for this. We need healthy, functional, receptive and responsive membranes. So, and now we have male fertility issues. So against standard perceptions, 40 to 50% of fertility issues are male factor. Sperm counts in Western countries have dropped by 59% in the last 40 years, leading straight to ICSI rather than investigating male factors. There's a tendency to focus on the female fertility issues and overlook any male factors. The optimum health of sperm is vital. 
and there is a higher omega-6-3 ratio in men having fertility issues. And so within the kind of three factors of sperm that they test, you have your morphology, which is your structure, which can affect your fertilizing ability. You then have your motility, which is the sperm movement. And then you have your count slash volume. And so you need good levels of semen to transport and provide energy for the sperm. And then what also affects male fertility is testosterone levels, age, um, and your- Hey, Mick Jagger didn't realize that. <laughs> no. oh, sorry. Varicol, which is abnormal dilation of testicular veins, um, or seminal tubes can be blocked, or sperm DNA fragmentation, which is abnormal genetic material in the sperm. This should be below 25%, and this can lead to male subfertility, IVF failure, and miscarriage. And sperm DNA fragmentation doesn't get tested immediately in men. It's yeah. something that you have to push for. Um, and what they're starting to see in research is now that miscarriage is potentially more of a sperm factor problem than a female factor problem, as the sperm creates the placenta and it keeps everything going. And so if you've not got good quality sperm, miscarriage could be happening. Um, and lots of women don't know this and they kind of get the blame for everything going wrong, but it's completely not just on them. And it's not unheard of, um, and it's generally old school consultants, but it's not unheard of for them to look up with the sperm result and just look up and go, hey, you're doing great at the man because he's got, which looks like a, an okay sample, yeah. but on deeper investigation, wouldn't they? Yeah. And that's when the men need better antioxidants. Oh. Where have you gone? <laughs> so, men produce sperm continually. It takes three months to make sperm. Sperm do not like heat. Keep them away from heat. Diet and lifestyle changes offer the best way for men to optimize their fertility. Antioxidants, good multivitamin and mineral, but they also, obviously, they need a good cell membrane or they're not going to absorb it. So it doesn't matter if they take the best multivitamin in the world, they need to be able to absorb that, so they need a good cell membrane. Exercise is very important, but not cycling. Cycling's not great yeah. for the little sperm houses. Um, frequent ejaculation. Omega-3 improves sperm quality, motility, and count. Semen is rich in prostaglandins, and that is produced from omega-3. Sperm DNA fragmentation test will give you much more information, but as Beth said, they don't do them as much. It's very annoying. So omega-3s are vital for sperm health. Sperm contains a significant amount of omega-3 fatty acids, just like your brain and the eye. These fatty acids influence the morphology of the sperm. In particular, DHA is necessary for binding the building blocks of the acrosome at the tip of the sperm cell together. It is the job of the acrosome to penetrate the egg. So can you imagine that poor egg's trying to do its thing and the sperm's like, oh no, I'm not formed properly, I can't get in. That's exactly what happens. Do not like that? It's a great presentation. Thanks. Um, so mental blockers that can come with facility. So lack of control and power. If you don't know the information, you don't know what you're doing wrong, it can just feel very overwhelming. Um, how much do you want a baby? So this comes up for us quite a lot because like the next bit that says cake and chocolate, you'll say to someone, for your fertility, I need you to kind of give up sugar and look after your health. And they go, oh, but I quite like cake. And you go, you, you know. How much are you prepared to do yeah, to, to get that baby? And on, on the back of that, you will then get people say, but Rita down the street, who's 50 stone and takes lots of drugs and drinks alcohol all day. You know, we can't do the comparison. The next one, comparison, the death of joy. It's very difficult. Rita down the street might be 20 and when you're younger, you know, everything works better, even though you're destroying it bit by bit externally from bad lifestyle choices. So what we need to do is say to whoever's in front of us, female or male, is it doesn't matter what other people are doing. We are dealing with you and we want you in the best health. Forget everybody else. Let's get you where you need to be to get what you most want. And that's the baby. Yeah, and also people don't realize that the state of your health, both male and female, before you even get pregnant, determines the health of that child. So even if Rita down the street is doing all sorts, she's not giving that baby the best chance she can 
because she's not got her health and nutrition in check before starting to try for a baby. Um, so yeah, also people think about giving up alcohol, think about lifestyle choices they're making. Um, and also affordability, people don't like paying for kind of good quality supplements and paying for their health and it's quite hard to persuade yeah. them sometimes. I've got um, an acupuncturist friend who in her clinic, she will always see the couple together. But actually, um, if somebody says to her, I can't afford this, she just says, well, you can't afford a baby then. I personally find that slightly harsh because you find a way, yeah. you know, whether you put the baby has to sleep in the drawer like the olden days. But she's what her point is, she's saying, put yourself first. And it's about prioritizing, you know, just prioritize these choices to get yourself in good health. And with the omega-3, when the, the woman is pregnant, you need the EPA and DHA because the EPA helps transport the DHA to the baby's brain. And when the baby's born, there's a golden week where the omega-3 lifts, but actually whatever the mum's omega-3 index is and whatever the mum's omega-3-6 ratio is, the babies will be. So it is really important. These are some testimonials. This is a lovely one. So being told you have unexplained infertility is like being spun around a thousand times and then told to find your way home. You are at a crossroads in a pitch black, no lights, no direction, no one to ask, apart from speaking to a stranger about coming to terms with it. When they don't have the answers, you want the answers too. That's where I started my IVF journey. After IVF cycle one, I was left like jelly. There was no strength until I found acupuncture. Acupuncture has changed my life in so many ways. It answered questions my body had had for 26 years but didn't know. When I walked into my first acupuncture consultation and treatment, I was in a dark place. Two hours later, I walked out in the light with no weight on my shoulders, a plan and a mentor to help me go into battle. If there was one thing I'd recommend to anyone embarking in fertility treatment, it's to invest in your holistic care. Find someone that treats you like a human, treats your symptoms, treats your mind, heart and soul. They want to heal you and cure you. Um, for anyone about to start IVF or assisted fertility journey, please stop for one day and look up holistic care. I'd never heard of acupuncture for fertility. I'm not using infertility anymore as I only use positive words. So for cycle one, I was on my own with no support. I had no idea about blood supply to your uterus helping. I had no idea that cold feet are not good for fertility and cold food are not good for fertility. I was lucky that I'd been told to follow Zeta West on Instagram. And when I read about her affiliated acupuncturists, I was so lucky that I lived three miles from one. I learned so much in my first acupuncture session with Fair With The Wellbeing, who is literally one of my most favorite people in the entire world. I learned about damp. I was taught about what is a normal period. I never knew the periods I'd suffered from the age of 14 were abnormal and was my body's way of telling me that something wasn't right. I was heard and listened to. I was able to express my devastation of the news I had received. The feelings of shame and failure were met with compassion. The treatment I received is unreal and the feelings I feel during and after are amazing. For me, holistic and nutritional care is the most important treatment to build alongside the fertility journey. My clinic never advised or told me about holistic care, so I feel very passionate about spreading the word to help anyone who feels they are a bit lost. Now, this lady was brilliant because she did take all the advice and she, she took the supplements and she did it. she's been doing everything she possibly can. So she is an incredible example of someone who does listen and understands. It is a minefield. It really is. And it's it's getting worse yeah. and one thing we haven't mentioned is the toxins we haven't talked about yeah the environmental toxins that have an impact the fact that estrogens in uh, plastics everywhere yeah and, and the period care products that people are using they're full of chemicals and bleach and i found something out that um there's no health and safety regulations around period products like tampons pads anything like that so they can put chemicals plastics all sorts in there and there is nobody checking so using organic or kind of menstrual cups um, and yeah. things like that, just um, body care products, everything really. Everything. You have to go try and go as natural as possible with everything to give your body the best chance. I do understand the environment we live in is difficult, which is why I say control what you can and don't feel guilty about what you can't. Just do what you can for your best. Back to why you have to keep your feet warm, because I can imagine people are going, what? The um, inside of the feet has all the yin meridians, 
So in Chinese medicine, the yin meridians feed up through the uterus. So what you're doing is you're keeping the feet warm. So the warmth goes into the uterus. So you've got this lovely, gorgeous little environment in the uterus. And then also the cold foods thing, yeah. is especially in winter, for because patients will say, well, I'm eating really healthy because I'm eating salad. But if you're eating salad in winter, that's cold food. And then your digestive system is having to work harder to warm up the food so that it can digest it. So warm foods like roast vegetables, soups and things like bone that. Broth. Bone broth. Bone broth. Love bone broth is the best kind of thing you can do for your body when you're trying to conceive. Holistic care is the care of the whole person. I have found that the word holistic has been a bit, um, as I'm doing that, has been a little bit hijacked and people kind of, uh, di- I won't use the word dis. Who do I think I am? But do you know what I mean? They they have a go at that word as as if it's something new age or hippie yeah. or again attacking people that are really chill. So holistic care is actually the whole. So it's it you know holistic care. It's not about looking for a specific remedy or therapy. This is about looking at the person in front of you and working out how you can best help them and how they can best help themselves. It's not about you healing or curing them. It's about you working as a team to work out what fits with their life and how you can help them get that baby. (laughs) This is Beth. This is my favorite picture ever. I woke her up to have a passport photo taken. She was not happy. I've never lived it down since. <laughs> um, so the key messages are that the egg and the sperm are simply cells. Cells need to be nourished and have good cell membrane fluidity. And it takes two, so please don't leave it all to her. Being a healthy dad leads by example. Yes, you can improve sperm. The sperm is made every three months and can therefore be altered. A man can make a huge difference and impact to the sperm quality by focusing on nutrition and lifestyle. The uterus needs to be a six star hotel and not a highway motel. So basically what you want is you want a room with the trouser press. You don't want one of those rooms that's got none of that. Hair dryer, trouser press, that's what you want. It needs good blood flow to the uterine artery and it needs to be free of inflammation and needs to be a healthy environment. You've got to keep thinking your inside matters, really matters at this point. You know, you're making a human being. You're literally, I mean, how incredible is that? And then you want to go on to produce milk and that blood makes milk. So you want your blood to be as good as possible. Um, A top quality egg, a top quality sperm and a top quality environment. This gives the best possible chance for your baby. Zinzino products can support all of the above alongside a healthy diet and lifestyle, of course. You can't just take products and then go, done it, sorted, and then go and have, I don't know, a kebab and 20 pints of lager. It's all about balance. But I'm also not saying don't have, I mean, I was, again, I was told years ago, if you're going to advise someone to have alcohol, have a good quality glass of champagne or a good quality (laughs) glass of red wine. So if you're going to drink, whilst you're trying just enjoy it and make sure it's the best quality yeah because you still want joy as well yeah a lot fertility journey can rob you of your joy because you spend your whole time focusing on what you can and can't do what you should be doing Um, and you need the joy you need oxytocin because it helps when you're trying to conceive so yeah bits of joy as well sprinkled in are really important and interestingly oxytocin can be released when you hug somebody but you have to want to hug them and love them and stuff and often in fertility, the man and the woman hate each other, yeah. which is difficult when you're trying to get them to have sex. Yeah. Um, and even if I suggest to them, oh, have a nice hug, release some oxytocin. Mm, they're, not, they're not a fan they of this. Do they that. don't want to do that. <laughs> so you, you, you want to encourage all these hormones out and laughter and, you, you know, have a glass of champagne so they relax and have wild sex when great. Have wild sex when you're ovulating. It doesn't have to be regimented sex with your legs up against a wall yeah Um, and then so they give me a year to prepare so you plan for a wedding why not a baby you spend thousands getting ready for that one wedding day why would you not invest that in a baby as well yeah a baby's going to be there forever a wedding day is a wedding day and then you've got the marriage which is a whole different thing i'm not even going to go onto that subject the marriage is a whole different thing to a wedding day. Yes. Yeah. Other supplements. So there's a folic acid methyl folate thing that's happening at the moment. Um, so folic acid is what they recommend to lots of women who are trying to conceive and to take during pregnancy. Methyl folate is the naturally occurring version of this. 
And so what they found is that lots of women have a gene that means they can't absorb folic acid, whereas everybody can absorb folate. So we always recommend to women who are trying to conceive that they take folate rather than folic acid. Um, then the vitamin D, Xenoshine, it's a regulating factor for your hormones and immune system. COQ10 improves ovarian response and egg quality. The Xenobiotic improves your gut microbiome and vaginal microbiome. And then we always suggest a good quality multivitamin. Now, I've said about the Xenobiotic. Now, some IVF clinics, because they are really starting to test the vaginal microbiome now, there are a few other products out there. And some clinics actually do a pessary that's straight into the vaginal microbiome. Personally, if you fix your gut, it's going to fix everything. So you just need to really focus on having a good gut microbiome and everything else will fall into place. But they are testing the vaginal microbiome more. Um, they are giving antibiotics quite a bit to fix this, which means even more so you've got to have a good gut microbiome to fight the antibiotics that they're suggesting you put inside. Yeah. Um, and then with the good quality multivitamin, it's the... Extend. Extend. Um, or we recommend Zeta West as Zeta, well. We do recommend Zeta West as well. Balance. Because they, there is there is good stuff there. What else was I going to say then? It's gone. See? Menopause. Menopause. The brain is gone. <laughs> Something else I was going to say. It may come back to me. <laughs> so thank you everybody for listening. This is all of our details. So if you have a me um if you have a question that you want to send to us that you don't want to ask us now, feel free to message one of us. If you're speaking to one of us, you're generally speaking to both of us. So whichever one of us you contact, it's the same thing. Um, or if anybody has any questions or anything now they'd like to ask as well. I've got a question. I can't remember what I wanted to say. Clearly it wasn't that important. <gasps> I know. There's a very, very famous pregnancy supplement that you see on buses just can't name things um it's not very good it's got synthetic things in it and it's not got everything you need and i would if you can strongly suggest people don't take it yeah we generally don't suggest that people don't take supplements but for this one with everything that's in it we strongly suggest that people don't take it because There's everything's in it and everything that's not in it. Yeah, it's just, it's not great. So, so yeah. yeah, so get good advice because you don't want to spend money on supplements that aren't working. Yeah, that's a massive waste of money. When people say to me, oh, that, that's expensive, that's expensive. And I said, well, so is the one you take because it's not working. Yeah. So that's a really expensive waste of money. So yes, sorry, that's my little <laughs> supplement rant. But anyway, any questions, anybody? That was absolutely fantastic, fantastic information. But I do have a question. So you said linoleic acid would help with fertility. What foods are rich in linoleic acid? So you've got linoleic acid and alpha linoleic alpha linoleic yeah. acid. So you've okay. got your PLA is your plant-based omega three. So mm -hmm. when you're talking about that, you've got your walnuts, uh, which are apparently very good. Um, I remember Colin Robertson saying he encourages women to have that against breast cancer. Who knew? So walnuts, okay. blueberries, spinach, e spinach, linseeds, flax seeds, chia seeds. Okay. I think that's it for okay. the they're they're the plant based omega threes, and then. Yeah. Your your you get your linoleic acid you can get from like meat products and, and bone broth and things. Yeah, and um just for everybody that's here, our blood test, we have a blood test and that lets us know our arachidonic index and where we're sitting at with it. And usually it's poultry. If it's not um free range poultry, organic poultry, that's what raises your arachidonic index because chickens and eggs that are not allowed to roam around and eat worms and are fed green are usually what will raise your arachidonic index am i right jackie yeah because they're full of the grain is full of omega-6 yeah so it, it, it raises that yeah because people think yeah. oh i'm eating chicken it's healthy well it is yeah. it's the right sort correct correct yeah because i i i'm i'm really into i'm not going to name any supermarkets but 
um, one of my friends, her dad's a farmer and there is a supermarket that has won the best animal welfare for the last four years and they have higher welfare chicken and uh -huh. that they insist that chicken is fed omega-3. I love it. So just for anybody out there, look for higher welfare chicken when you're buying chicken if, if you don't if you don't want to go if you don't want to go for the full organic free range that's good info i like that mm -hmm. uh samantha do you want to add anything if you want to unmute, unmute yourself and if you would like to add something there no i thought that was excellent um really enjoyed the session today um, especially you know the link between the emotions and the and the, and the fertility because i do a lot with trauma so yeah, and that, that's really high and causes the stress levels and everything to be high. Um, so when I have people on the protocol, I think in terms of the protocol, it's really interesting because a lot of women feel like, especially when they get pregnant, it, that's the time in which they're kind of like, oh, when can I come off it? And they don't realise, oh, but yeah. they don't realise it's kind of like they don't want to extend it all the way to the end. <laughs> yeah. And after, <laughs> when they're breastfeeding, it's like, no, continue. In fact, continue for life. Yeah. Be healthy forever. <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting because a lot of a lot of the research says that women will change their habits on the basis of becoming pregnant, and once they get pregnant, it's kind of like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, brilliant, brilliant yeah. session. Yeah, yeah, that. that was really, really interesting. When is the oh, oh, acid effects burn? There's loads of questions. Um, Beth can do the questions. I did see the endometriosis one. Um, it's probably going to be about six weeks, probably before we can pull that one together. But we will. We will definitely pull an endometriosis and adenom adenomosis. Oh. <laughs> it's getting late. That word. We will do one on that. It was it's really. Coming. It's really good because my aragonic acid was really high, and I I changed my chicken. So that was really good information um, on my test. So it's important that we look at our diets as well as taking our omega-3. So it's, Completely, yeah. completely. Yeah. Diet is vital yeah. alongside it. You can't just do one without the other. It has to and be. And what, what, folic acid, what folic acid do you recommend? Because obviously Zinzino don't do one. Which one do you recommend? No, Zinzino have methylfolate in their Extend Plus. It oh, might, okay. It might not be they they do folate. I make sure uh, you know I was very honest. And is that enough? Is that is that taking four of those four extends? Yeah, is that two yeah. You would have to take extent? four. You'd have to take and four to get the amount. So you can always add in, can't you? Yeah, there's a website called Cytoplan, and they have just a methyl folate supplement, and that's the best right. purest one that I've seen for when trying to conceive and then once pregnant the zeta west pregnancy supplements contain all the methylfolate that you need from that point once they're pregnant so on preconception you want to be taking the zinzino yeah 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 i mean i spoke yeah. to paul clayton about um the, the supplements for pregnancy and he's like they are perfectly adequate for it but you're going to find women will want to take the Zeta West ones because they're very well known or they'll want to take certain other ones. Um, there, I think there might be a few bulkers, bulk, bulkers and fillers in Zeta's ones, but her products are very good. But Zinzino's are all natural again, so I'm going to veer towards your natural because that's okay. not biased. The Extend Plus is completely natural. Yeah. Absolutely fully from food, yeah. 100%. But and the Zeno, the Zeno Shine, I wanted to ask you as well. Yeah. Because when I had my vitamin D test, my Zeno, my uh, vitamin D was very low, so it's probably advisable to test everyone for their Zeno, for their vitamin D. Yeah. Yes. And the Zeno D Shine is. is okay to maintain that vitamin D, but I think again, yeah. if it's particularly low, taking four, eight, twelve, sixteen, if you're really low, it's probably too much Zeno Shine, isn't it? So you probably need to take a different. Dif different vitamin D. If you're, if it's really low and you're going to have to take a lot because there, there is a, um, mm -mm. a thing on the. I think it's a thousand. I think it's a thousand, thousand walls about four. I use. Because you know. some yeah, people four. end up having to take five thousand. Yeah, or even six thousand. Yeah, yeah. So you know you have to then have that discussion with them. But if they're actually at like eighty or ninety, then you can keep them bolstered with it and there is vitamin d in the oil the extend plus 
And you, when you, for your ladies that want to get pregnant, you, you um, test them for vitamin D and you do the balance test. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And often, depending what they're presenting, I will encourage the blood uh, sugar test as well. Yeah. I will do the HB, 1A, C, C, B. If they've got high estrogen levels and stuff, it's good to know, isn't it? Well, well it, it just tells us the insulin. It tells us the policy. Yeah, level. insulin resistance. Yeah. yeah, so very polycystic ovaries is insulin resistance. Yeah, so you, and then you have to try and discuss insulin resistance and the fact that they may need to do some sort of fast, which could only be a 14 hour one, but they're going to need to kick their body out of insulin resistance to try and get them out. Because you do find with polycystic ovaries and polycystic ovary syndrome, these people want to keep eating all day, like every two hours. They want to keep eating. Okay, yeah. that's really interesting. Really interesting. Crazy. Okay. They literally want to eat and you have to say to them right just have these gaps because your body is creating the problem and making the problem worse okay i didn't realize that with the insulin that's really interesting thank you so yeah, much shelly shelly who's one of our nutrition partners says they should definitely be an absolute three-hour window between every meal with no snacking see i i always say four to six hours between meals yeah yeah. But she was talking a minimum. She was talking the minimum yeah. that there must be a minimum of three hours. Because what minimum. happens? Is, I mean, this is Chinese medicine as well. So the food goes in, and it's got its little journey to go on. And if yeah. you keep interrupting it by keep putting food in, it can't yeah. do everything it's supposed to do, and it can't digest as it's supposed to digest. Yeah, and you need a minimum of twelve hours between uh, dinner and breakfast before yeah. you put food, and a cup of coffee with milk in it is you breaking a fast. Yes. It ha you know, the only thing you can have is the likes of green tea or something like that in which you're not breaking the fast. Am and I if, right? If you are breaking your fast, it needs to be a really good quality, high protein breakfast in order to secure your blood sugars then for the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is all common sense. You know, never mind fertility. This is how we should be leading our life. Never mind anything else. Listen, there was one, Joe Foster had asked a question. How does arachidonic acid affect sperm quality again it's down to the omega-6-3 imbalance so if your omega-6 is raised and one of them is the arachidonic acid you've got inflammation so it will cause inflammation in the body and it will cause an inflammatory response in the sperm okay guys thank you so much thank you very very much appreciated thank you bye bye